Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guy, Bear Wozniak. My beautiful bride, Cindy, always says, start off uh, your radio show by making the sign of the cross in Hawaiian. So, mekainoa o kamakua kekeki a meke uhana hemalele. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Today we have with us uh, Mike Aquilina. He's our most uh, returning guest of all the guests we have. He and Jason Jones uh are the two guests that appear on our show the most, and I have got to talk with Mike a little bit. So we're gonna we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about the manly men of the early church fathers. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Kickstart that engine. Roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, uh, we're going through a real challenging time here in Hawaii. This is a recorded show, so it'll be probably weeks before this airs. But at the moment, um, our beautiful uh, historic town of Lahaina you probably have heard has, was victim of a of a huge fire, a very fast moving fire, uh, and uh, it, that that town looks out over the channel towards Molokai, and my mother and father lived there. My my father was a Catholic deacon at the church Maria Lanakila, which means Mary, Our Lady of Victory, mm. and uh, it's very profound that in that church, when there's when you see the pictures, there's ashes everywhere except for that the church is standing. And it reminds me of uh, when I rode with Archbishop Winsky down to Key West back in 2017. We were at the, at the Basilica there of Our Lady. Uh, and um, they, there's a story there that, it, that the, 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 the legend there is that, the, that Mary promised the people of Key West that there would never be another tragic hurricane to hit that spot as long as they prayed and remained devoted. Well, after uh, just a few weeks after we left, uh, that big hurricane, I believe it was Hurricane Irma, swept through there. And I heard from Archbishop Wensky, and he said that uh, the church is standing. And he said, in fact, not even the candle in the outside grotto was blown out. This is, this is, uh, the church is not a symbol of hope. It is hope because the church is Jesus Christ. The church is the body of Christ. And the other thing I want to say is there in Lahaina, there's another very precious, precious place. Maybe you know what a banyan tree is. A banyan tree is not native uh, or indigenous to the islands. It was brought here, but we have beautiful banyan trees. It's a big tree that grows. And then when the branches go out, roots like vines drop down that eventually become roots and they eventually become trunks and support that next branch of the, of the tree. And so here, right in our, right in our, just a block from the home, we have a, be a beautiful big banyan tree. And then at the Moana, the oldest hotel in Hawaii, we have a big one there that takes up the whole patio area of the oldest hotel in Hawaii. But in Maui, in Lahaina, there's a special banyan tree that takes up a whole city block. Can you imagine one tree? When you walk through it, you think there's lots of trees because there's thick trunks everywhere. But if you look, all of these branches are coming out from that main trunk, and then roots go down deep. And then those roots become... As the vines come down, the roots support that structure of that branch, and then the branch continues to grow, and another root goes out. That's the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church is rooted and grounded in our faith, but as we spread the gospel, as the early church, the primitive church spread the gospel, you can see uh, branches going out and then roots going down and roots going deep. And so many of those roots, or this church or that church, uh, you see represented there, the, the early church fathers, and they're incredibly deep writings. I don't think you can find much deeper writings as the, the early Greek fathers and the, and then the Latin fathers just, uh, and, and so we need people like Michael Aguilina, who's with us today, Aguilina to, to help us understand the fathers, but it was Justin Martyr who brought me roaring back to the faith and, and actually watching EWTN and, and hearing my men like Mike Aguilina, uh, talk about the church fathers. So Mike, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Hey, Bear, it's, it's great to be back. Thank you for that story and for that image of the banyan tree. I don't think yeah. I'll ever lose that. That's beautiful. Yeah. 
Yeah, it is powerful, isn't it? God's creation t- teaches us. Don't don't they say that the the that the creation is what the fourth, the fifth gospel, or some mm. someone said something like that? It oh, wasn't my. just it wasn't just a martyr, obviously, or you would know. But <laughs> um, yeah, I was just uh, uh, just received a book. I've read it once before called the the Scripture Wars uh, by Bennett. Uh, you know about Justin Martyr and uh, these these, these early church fathers that battled for our faith. But you you had an experience yesterday. We were just talking about how these two churches all de- devoted to Mary and you, you, you were struggling with, as we all do as authors, but you said you really hit a roadblock in a project you were working on. And yesterday was the feast of, of the assumption of our lady's assumption. And what happened? Well, you know, I, I was, I was so frustrated bear. I was just, I, I was, I was just banging my head off the wall, you know, almost literally. I, uh, I, I'd been trying to find a way into this book project. I tried one way and then a second way, a third way, and then a fourth way. On each of these ways, I spent several days or as much as a week trying to met, get it to move forward mm. and then abandoned it. It just was mm. not working. And I was, I was mm. utterly frustrated. And last night I went to Our Lady and I'm not ashamed to say I went and I was in tears. I really mm. was just mm. very frustrated, could not go forward. And mm. I just, I said, Hey, it's your, um, it's your, um, it's your feast day. You know, your son will do anything for you. Mm-hmm. You know, he showed that at the wedding feast mm-hmm. at Cana, mm-hmm. even advancing the time of his, uh, of his ministry. And, uh, and, uh, he'll, he'll do this for you. He'll give me a way into this project. And I went to bed last night. I woke up this morning I woke up typing. I really did. I mm. went right I went right to my laptop, started typing, and I had thousands of words in no mm-hmm. time at all. You know, so I found a way forward uh into this big book project and uh and I'm feeling pretty good at the moment. <laughs> and, and it's and it's wonderful too when you when you know that the Lord's leading you, uh yeah. that there's something he's wants you to do, but you keep bumping into roadblocks. It's it's uh, it's important to to it's important to have that moment of retreat with the Lord and just say, Lord, what is your will? You know, thy, thy will be done. And I'm sure you were doing that. But sometimes like thick headed people like me, I bump into a lot more walls probably than you do. And then finally, there's that open door and you go through and everything just kind of works, you know? Yeah. And I think that that's why our Lord inspired St. John to include that story of the wedding feast at Cana, because what happens there? You know, these people are in a bind and they go to Our Lady. Can you do something? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Meaning, can you get him to do something? You're right. right, uh, right, you know, right. And uh, and she goes to him and, and, and he says that it's not his time. Yes, God love... himself has told her it's not time for this. Right. And yet he'll advance his hour to that moment because his mother asked. He inspired the inclusion of that passage in Scripture so that yes. we would not miss the point. If we go to his mother, it's going to yes. be good. It's, it's so be wonderful. Good. It's so beautiful, you know. Uh, and John was so close to her, right? I mean, he took her yes. to his home from that moment. And then we know the tradition tells us that she lived with him up near Ephesus for a while. And I think that's why the Gospel of John is so different than the other Gospels, because there was a this woman that pondered these things in her heart, had so much to tell him. Yes. And you think about the cosmic sense of the opening of the gospel of John in the beginning was the word and the word is with God and the word was God. Very different. Right. And mm-hmm. uh, so um, you wonder Mary at the, at the annunciation and then at the assumption, you know, he was, he, he, he was there. I'm sure he was there at the, at the assumption and, uh, and yeah, go ahead. And all in between. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. Between yeah. Because, yeah. Uh, because we get to the end of that passage and I forget what, um, I forget the line. I, th- I believe it's John two twelve at the end of that passage about the wedding feast at Cana, and it says that that uh, that our Lord went down and spent time with his mother and the apostles. Right, so there wait, he is mm, uh, mm. with with his mother and and his disciples. Right. Now so wait a minute. Is that in, there. Is, is that in John two? It's that early in the gospel. Yes. Yes. That's so cool, man. It starts it? out right with Mary, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes. Oh, that I never, I never really pondered that, you know, really contemplated that before. That is, that is, that is just so cool. That is so cool. Well, um, our, our lady, um, you know, I know when I, for those of you are listening and may not understand our devotion to Mary, I remember when uh, I had given, had a powerful conversion experience in the Lord when I was 19 through the Catholic renewal, the charismatic renewal. 
But I did not understand Mary. And so many people had so many things to say about Mary. And I said, I don't understand this. I I don't want to take away from Jesus. You know, that's co- usually the common thought. So I said, Lord, I'm just going to put Mary right here. I'm not going to reject this, but I'm going to put Mary right here on the shelf. I hate to say that. I did that. But no, I understand. Will you, will you teach me this? As time goes on, will you reveal this to you Is this if this is you? And we got to take a break now. But all I can say is that the Lord has done that. And over m- many de- decades before I really understood. And then once you understand, you read these scriptures and they're just like, every little scripture about Mary just opens up like a mother load. We'll be right yes. back with our good friend, Mike Aquilina. We're going to talk story about the manly men of the of the <laughs> early church fathers. Be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bears Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion. Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com and also on amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm so thrilled to tell you uh, that I have with us today Mike Aquilina as our guest, who's a prolific author, and I'm a wannabe author. I, but my newest book, uh, my third book, published by Sophia, is coming out right now. And uh, I mean, every author, people ask you, well, what's your favorite book? Well, they're all your children, you know. But this book, I really dig on. The, rule, the, the name of the book is 12 Rules for Manliness. Mm. Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? It's, it was inspired by my wife when we were driving along Diamond Head, and she says, so she can love this song. Of course, my wife's a cowgirl. She's a rodeo girl. But she she turned up the radio, and there was a, a woman singing, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? Where's my John Wayne? Where's my happy ending? You know. Mm. And so she, my wife said, why don't you just talk about one chapter out of the, out of the new book uh, each show? So I'll just mention, <laughs> one of my chapters is that a, that a, that a cowboy – Rides for the brand. I use a lot of Louis Lemore Westerns. You know, behind me, Mike, I have all those books from the early church fathers. But right beside me, I have 105 Louis Lemore Westerns. And My he, dad uh, was addicted to them. Uh, yeah, I love, I love Louis Lemore. He was a, he was, a, he was a, he wrote about men of virtue and he wrote about yeah. powerful women. Uh, and so one of the things he said was, um, "Ride for the brand." Uh, when a cowboy signed on with a brand, uh, he he was expected to be loyal, come hell or high water, no matter the adversity or the danger. To, to ride for that brand and people would know that people counted on him. If you signed to ride for the brand and then uh, you, you went off, uh, went off on, on, you know, herding cattle or, or, or whatever you're doing, going off into the distance to mend fences or something, and you didn't do your job, not only did you let the ranch down, but you, you actually could put other men in danger. Mm-hmm. And so um, we as Christians, we need to ride for the brand. People should know who we ride for. Are you one of those hidden Christians 
are you one of those nice guys that makes you, me just kind of want to throw up? You know, that's what nice guys made Jesus want to do. You know that. Mm. Jesus said, I wish you were hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm, I will explode, vomit you out of my mouth. So, yeah. man, we, we want you to stand up and be counted and be like these early uh, church fathers who are men among men and, and ride for the brand and let people know who you ride for. And they'll know that because as you walk through your life, they'll see joy in your, in your, in your, uh, in your continence and you'll be more than willing to, uh, to, uh, to um, serve people, to, to find ways to, to uh, take care of your kuleana, your family and those around you, you know, that uh, God has called you to serve. So we need men for, to ride for the brand. We got one of those guys here with us, Mike Aquilina. I'm so glad to know Mike. I, I uh, loved watching him early in, in the early days as I returned to the faith on EWTN. And it was because it was the early church fathers that brought me back, and specifically Justin Martyr, by the way. Mike Aquilina, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey, thanks for having me back, Bear. I you always know, enjoy I, our time. I do too. I really do, because I don't have to do anything. You do all the work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I interviewed Father Bryce Lundgren. He's a Catholic cowboy priest in Wyoming. And you know how cowboys are kind of like reticent about talking about themselves? Yeah. It's like, Father, this is an interview. You got to talk about yourself. <laughs> you, know, you, gotta, <laughs> you know, and then he finally opened up and he wrote a new book, The Catholic Cowboy Ways, uh, published by Sophia, too. So, so Mike, talk to it, talk story with us about these early church fathers and uh, uh, these men of God, uh, examples of manliness. What, what, well, which, which ones come to mind? Well, uh, all of them. All of them, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, and all in different ways. And I think that says something, too, that that manliness does not just have one Hollywood produced manifestation. Uh, you know, it's it's got many manifestations. Oh, that's so well said. Yeah. 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 I mean, this is this is it. Uh, there are many different ways to fulfill that manhood that God mm -hmm. has endowed you with, you know, Um so, uh, you know, you, you think about that. You, you mentioned Justin Martyr. And of course, here's somebody who was who was fearless, who was able to take on great projects. You know, he he went from one side of the empire to the other. He mm. moved from Palestine, which was his home, um, all the way to Rome. He went across continents in order to establish a school of philosophy there. Now, along the way, he evangelized. But think about the danger that he faced through all those travels, because at that time, travel was not an easy thing and it was not a safe thing mm -hmm. to take on. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, you know, if, if, uh, if, if you, if you want to, uh, if you want to learn about, uh, the, the risks, well, just, uh, do a Google search on maritime archeology span <laughs> and oh you'll my, find yeah, that yeah. there's this burgeoning field of study because there were so many ships at the bottom of the ocean. You're right. right? You're finding new ones every day, you know, that's right. And if sand, you, if, yeah. Yeah, if you if you read the the Acts of the Apostles, you find that Saint Paul's ships, you know, the ships he was Wasn't on, it, how many two or three times he was shipwrecked? Right, right. You yeah. know, that's what he he lists that among the many things that he faced, and you can bet that all of the other great evangelists of that time faced the same dangers. If you traveled by land. Well, you had to stop traveling at night because the roads were unsafe. There were bandits on the road. Right. But there weren't hotel chains at the time. So you had to find a friendly place to stay. And good luck with that when you're in a right. city full of strangers. Right. The Jews were renowned for their hospitality with their own people because you could go to the synagogue in any town and they would mm. find a place for you to stay. Mm. St. Paul counted on that. Okay. Right. You're Probably right. All the apostles counted on that when they went from city to city. But this mm. later generation, Justin Martyr, they could not count on that as they went from place to place. They were um, rejected you know, by the synagogues. So many, That's many right. And not only that, but Justin was, was a Gentile. He wouldn't oh, have been welcome anywhere yes. near the synagogue. He they was from Palestine, but he was a pagan. And so and so Justin Martyr was what 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 year? Oh, he probably was born around the year 100, so not too yeah. long after our Lord's ascension into heaven. The church was very new, and he's an important figure because he writes about what he knew growing up in Palestine. He tells us many things, uh, but among the things that we learn from him is that Christians were already going on pilgrimage to the holy mm. places mm. of the life of our Lord. They were already going to the cave of the nativity, even though mm. there had been a, a, a pagan shrine built over it. They would mm -hmm. go there to honor our Lord's nativity. Um, mm. 
And again, if you made pilgrimage in that time, you were undertaking a certain risk. You were cert facing certain dangers. This is the kind of manliness we find in not only the church fathers, who are the teachers we know about, the, the ones whose writings have survived for 2,000 years, but also all of those other Christians who were their contemporaries, who, who just did their job, you know, lived their lives, practiced their devotions, went on pilgrimage, and we never found out their names. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a, that's our common everyday foot soldier. That that really is the the the, the blood and guts of the of the Catholic Church today. Absolutely. And, the, and you know, one of one of my chapters, I talk about how a man needs to be dangerous. Yeah. You know, as, and and that's in different levels. One is you know spiritual warfare. Another is just to stand up and be counted for your faith. But the third thing is actually physically, you better be able to defend yourself. You know, mm -hmm. and the and think about I don't I, I you don't hear about Peter carrying a sword anymore after that. Uh, event in the in the in the um all you know at uh, mount mount of olives but um you know they had to be ready to defend themselves i you know maybe they they carried a stick instead you know a staff instead as they walked but it was gnarly you know to 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 um to to just do the things that they did what what's enough and justin martyr his writings on the mass was about the most dangerous thing he could have done because he wrote it to the sure. emperor right he wrote it to yes. the emperor yes and he held nothing back. He wrote a letter to the emperor and he wrote in a letter to the Senate. Both of them were open letters. And he was operating a school that was openly a Christian school of philosophy in the capital city. And he was doing this at a time when it was illegal to practice the faith. It was illegal to own Christian books. And yet here he is. He's producing Christian books. He's teaching Christian students. He's publicly debating with pagans. And one of these pagans who Love lost the debate was the one who denounced him, you know, and that's mm. that's how Justin became Justin Martyr, uh, he that, because martyr. he was willing yeah. to face these dangers. Yeah, uh, you know, he you have to be ready not only to face your uh, you've got to be ready not only to defend yourself, but to defend your home, to defend yes. your family, to mm -hmm. defend those who are dependent upon you. Right, mm -hmm. that's the sign of manliness. It's not just mm -hmm. me. I'm out for if I it's defend my, my if I'm defending myself, it's because my family's counting on me. That's right. Right. You got it. You yeah. got it. So, I mean, these people thought of the church as their home. They Amen. thought of their home as a church. Mm -hmm. They yes. thought of their family as the church. Amen. <laughs> right. And yeah. they, they thought of the church as their family. The um, domestic so, church, right. To the, the Absolutely. Yeah. As Archbishop Bishop Chaput said, we're going to take a break here. <laughs> Uh, I, someone asked him at a meeting I was once, uh, what is it? What is, what is the, one of the best programs for the new evangelization? And he just said, get married, have lots of children, bring them up in the faith. That's it. Yeah. The domestic church. And, uh, and, and so, yeah, so a man has to be, uh, able to defend his family physically. He needs to be able to defend the faith. As Peter said, have a reason for your hope. And he needs to be able to do spiritual warfare. We're talking with my good friend, Mike Aquilina, who's surrounded by books. My goal is to have <laughs> as many books. I want to be like Mike. That's my goal. I don't know if you remember that old commercial. I forget what that was about. But uh, Mike Aquilina is with us. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is Dan the Moon Markham with another episode of Country Up Apart. Two times work took me across the country ahead of my family. Another time was separated from them for better part of a year in order to make ends meet. A part is hard. There is one particular fellow that works serious hard at keeping things apart or causing things to come apart. That would be the devil himself. Oh yes, he's real. The word diablos means the one who separates. He's been in the separating business since ancient time. We have to admit he's been fairly successful at living up to his name. Amazing what destruction he's accomplished with only one primary tool, lying. Confronting some religious liars, Jesus charged, You belong to your father the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Could be that's why folks lie so much. Learned it from their daddy, the devil. So question is, how does one stop old slew foot in his tracks? Same way Jesus did. Repeatedly struck him down with the truth. It's why the Bible's called the sword of the spirit. Jesus said Diablos was not holding to the truth. So stands to reason that one who holds to the truth will not be deceived. 
there's a Bible verse, a counter blow, if you will, for each deception and temptation. Now, holding on to the truth can take a good deal of effort, like resisting the temptation of a beautiful woman, or cheating on your tax return, or resisting a powerful want to pass on a word of gossip. So know how to use your sword, strap it on, and draw it for battle blood without hesitation when called upon. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak Adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guy, Bear Wozniak. We want to invite the mama bears to go to our website, deepadventure.com. And sign up to get our uh, you get our our weekly newsletter and you get access to uh, uh, one a whole year uh, the the school of virtue and for the men go there join the man cave deepadventure.com, join the man cave in the three year school of manliness for the men we have something special we have the man cave uh, which is uh, uh, a, a non Facebook community we share our our ups and our downs our YouTube kind of hold my beer moments and. We challenge and encourage each other. The man cave is kind of like the cave of Adullam. It's where all the misfits showed up during the time of King David and God formed them into the mighty men of valor. And so come join the man cave in our school of manliness. It's a three-year curriculum. And what we're most excited about, about this one-year virtue for the women and the school of manliness is uh, moms, if you're a single mom, bring your son through the school of manliness curriculum and fathers bring your, uh, your confirmation age sons through the school of manliness. Uh, it's so cool because you actually have a deep conversation. There's audio, video, written material. There's a self-assessments and, and action steps for them to take. So I, I don't know of anything else that does this uh, that I know of anyway, where a father can lead a son through it. And if you're a single mom, you can lead your son through it too. Well, our guest today is Mike Aquilina. And uh, he, he and Jason Jones are my two guests I, I love to have on the show the most. And we're talking about the manliness of the early church fathers. We just were talking about Justin Martyr. I just want to say this. When he wrote about the mass, and I don't know if the word is the epiclesis, but where, where, where the, how, when the host becomes the body and blood of Jesus Christ, I recognize the words, right? It's oh, pretty, yeah. pretty much what I hear at mass today. Yeah, and it was at that moment when I just said, "Okay, I, I, if the primitive church was a Catholic church, I need to return to the church." And I came roaring back. What's yeah. another? Yeah, go ahead, Mike. That's a great example. You know, it's it's funny, but in nineteen in the nineteen nineties, when the church was putting together its catechism, the Catechism of the Catholic Church, they didn't like find one of these Vatican theologians to write a new description of the Mass. They mm. said, oh, no, I think we got one on file here somewhere. That's what's Let cool me just about the church. Check in the drawer. Oh, we have one here from the year 150 AD. Yeah, right. We'll just use right. that one. Right. So the right, description right. of the Mass that St. Justin set down in 150 AD can no, go can... into the Catholic, Catholic Catechism verbatim as the description of the Mass today. And it was so real to the early Christians that they were accused of being uh, cannibals, that they were that they were sacrificing a human being and right. eating them. And uh, and and what was his response to that? He said, well, close, but not quite right. What, 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 what was he? What, I mean, but that's how genuine their belief was that it was the body, blood and soul and divinity that's of right. Jesus Christ. 
And he himself is grappling with this mystery, so much so that he has to invent new words to describe it. You know, he he describes uh, the product of the Eucharist, the sacrament. After the consecration, he describes it as the Eucharisted bread. And if mm. you if you click on that word, if you're if you're mm. if you're reading it in the in the the, the Greek that we have today, and mm-hmm. you click on that word, it, it 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 can't give you help because it's it's not a real word otherwise. It's yeah. <laughs> only a word in Justin Martyr. He invented it to describe what was happening because there were no words to describe what was happening. It's that real. So oh, yeah, that's he, so cool. He puts it out there in uh, in in gritty language, you know, that, yeah, that yeah. He, so that you make no mistake. And he's saying this again to the emperor. He's saying it to the, the Roman Senate. He wants them to really understand what's going on and not rely on urban legends and rumors. Yes, and that's a and that that's a dangerous thing that he did. You want you know what you know what the most dangerous thing a man can do is the most hmm. dangerous thing. Yeah, is to say these words: "Thy will be done." And Jesus yeah, said, know, though, yeah, that that's a gnarly dude. You know, you see that in the lives of so many of the fathers, like so the the really inspiring ones, the tough ones, like Maximus the Confessor. You know, mm-hmm. who the, you know they he was very influential in the church. He was very influential in the world, and uh, the emperor's people wanted him to publicly recant his teaching, which was simply the teaching of the Council of Nicaea. He would not do it. And they told him what the consequences would be. He still would not do it. And so they exiled him. But not only did they exile him, they cut out his tongue so he could never speak about this again. They cut out, they cut off his right hand so he could never write about Christian doctrine again. And then they sent him into exile. Mm. And what a witness he was there because mm-hmm. he was still a devout and, and even cheerful Christian after he had lost his hand and his tongue. And he mm. lived out the, his few remaining days that way mm. as a witness. Uh, you know, St. John Chrysostom was the same way. He was sent into exile. How many times? And, Wasn't it more than once? <laughs> it's more than once. And then Athanasius, many, many, yeah. many times. <laughs> Athanasius they, sent, spent, they, sent him, they sent him out in the desert, which is like sending a rabbit into the briar patch, right? I mean, he liked it out there. <laughs> and, well, they, they, uh, they, they, uh, you know, they, they sent Chrysostom off to a place where the the climate was wretched, and he was mm. made to walk there. That's right. You know, yeah. and he was in ill health to begin with, and he wasn't a young mm. man, so he had to walk there. Um, and in the end, it was the walk there that killed him. And at the end of it, he said, "Glory to God for all things. Glory to God in all things." You know, those Praise were his God. last words, and then he died. But you see, these guys with an undeniable man, 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 manliness. And what's interesting there is that, is that they, we call them fathers mm. and they teach me how to be a father. Mm. Most of the more celibate men, they mm. had no experience of, of, of having children of, mm. um, of, of raising children, mm. but they had so many children in the church and they knew Amen. the role they played. So they, 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 they would guard the church, defend the Protect church, the flock. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and sanctify the church, teach the church, rule the church, protect the church. All of these things that we expect a father to do in his little bitty house, we right. expect them to do in, in, in the church. They were bishops, they were clergy. And this is again, what's expected of a bishop or a clergyman today. They've got all of these duties and they teach me how to mm. be a father. Mm. You know, uh, and what an honor it is to be called father. I know when I was younger, I thought that we called God the father because, well, he's kind of like a dad. And we're like, <laughs> yeah. no, it's, it's the, up, the other way around. God really is indeed father. And yes. and he really did procreate. He did it really did eternally begot his son. And, you know, he also it procre- procreates us in that way, in that creative sense. I was I was out. Uh, I have this habit of of going out beyond the waves and just treading water for an hour, and my wife will jo- join me out there. Usually, I do that for most every day, but after she goes in, then I tend to have this time of just contemplative time with the Lord, and I I'll just contemplate the Father or the Son or the Holy Spirit. And I was contemplating the Father. I, I began to realize, you know, God the Father. It was in His intention and in his, his heart to to infuse in me my my unique spiritual soul spiritual rational soul with my own attributes and my kind of my desires not uh my my inclinations my skill set my gifts he did that and i said god thank you i really like 
what you gave me. You know, I just hope I can fulfill the purpose you gave it for me. Yeah. To love you well, back God, and to fulfill, but but God the Father, He is indeed my Father. He's indeed yeah. our Father, and and He created us to live in family, so that our families themselves would be images of the Trinity on earth. You know that we would have uh, mm -hmm. our form in the Eternal Father and Son mm. and Holy Spirit. Okay, mm. that we would live in this way in a communion of peace and love, constancy, all of these good things that we find perfectly in the trinity would would be found uh inchoately in the in the in in the home that people would be able to look at our homes and say you know i see an image of the trinity there it's that doesn't mean the house yeah. that doesn't yeah. mean that the house isn't messy okay it <laughs> doesn't mean that uh that uh the children don't get out of hand sometimes but mm -hmm. we're striving toward this we have something that we're striving toward and it's perfect we're not striving for something that is imperfect in any right. way you know right. our our ideal is 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 right up there you there's know, an ordered there's an orderedness about god's intention you know he 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 allocated he, he made the pro proclamation let there be light and then there was light and it yeah. was good but we see in the world today so much of the decay and not the decay but the outright uh defamation of of, of beauty of of, of of you know like even things like graffiti or people of things being out of order, it mm -hmm. really isn't according to God's will. God has an order for, you know, that really is true. Orderliness is next to godliness, although don't look at my desk <laughs> behind me, but but it really is true. And, and and there's an order for the family. And so we see this attack now on fatherhood of bringing, bringing this disorder into the home that a man, a, a man the other day uh, uh, bench pressed or lifted 200 kilograms more than had ever been done by this competition before he, 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 he came in identified as a woman and he broke the world record by about 40%, you know? So mm -hmm. that kind of disorder, we feel it in our gut. We know it's not right. And you know what? It's not good. No, because God, God created each of us with a purpose. And when we fulfill that, tell us, then we, then, then we're truly good. We're talk, talking with uh, my friend, Mike Aquilina. When we get back, we're going to talk about one of the gnarliest guys. Um, I'm thinking about Deacon Lawrence. Mm -hmm. we'll be right we'll be right back with mike aquiline and the bear wasnick adventure people love our ewtn tv show long ride home with bear wasnick thanks to you the show has won four different tally awards and now instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the mama bears or the man cave along with all the other benefits you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak Adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. And you even get short clips and live streaming of Bear and Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. still listening i thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station while well, you asked for it here is more of the bear wasnick adventure aloha welcome back to the bear wasnick adventure i'm so neglectful our guest is mike aquilina mike i 
keep forgetting to tell where, where can people find you and your 100 and how many books do you have you written now? <laughs> well, I don't know, uh, but my books, uh, you'll, you'll find them. Uh, you can find them at your, uh, your favorite Catholic bookstore. That's always the good place to begin. Those people are doing great evangelization Praise God. and we need yeah. to support them. Uh, you can also find them at all the usual places. Uh, you'll usually find the best prices at catholicbooksdirect.com mm. catholicbooksdirect.com that's mm. my son's business and um and he really i didn't prices. know that was your son's business that's yes, so it awesome is. it is wow uh, and uh and and he usually has the best prices for my books he makes sure of that that's um, excellent and so and, yeah and they're out there do you hesitate for me to suggest that people invite you to come and speak i know you're 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 a well, sought after speaker and you're on the road a lot sometimes it's a little bit daunting but, right yeah it is it is and the calendar is already pretty full for the coming year but you can give it a try <laughs> yeah you know the thing mike it, when i get to go speak um man you get to be with the greatest people you know when you're yes. hidden by well, a tv cam or radio man they did the people that they inspire you that's how i met you i mean yeah it's true I, isn't it yeah that's yeah right. i met you because we were speaking at the same conference and so we were just sitting back there and in their their backstage area and that's yeah. that's how i met you so you that's meet true. you make good friends on these conferences yeah and you and you know you look at the body of christ out there and they go oh so they're all well and good you know what's been happening lately at men's events a lot of young men yeah i, I encourage yeah. the men to bring their sons if they're confirmation age or older but a lot mm -hmm. of younger men are showing up at some of these events so tell us about deacon lawrence and his great i mean that guy He's like a Clint Eastwood, you know, version of, 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 a, of a early church father and his story. When, when wasn't it that they, the, the, he was asked to bring the, the treasure of the church or was that, am I thinking of someone else? No, he's the guy, he's the guy. Okay. It's, all right. Talk story. So, tell us about that. You know, what you got to know about deacons in the early church. I know your dad was a deacon. Am I, am I right? Yeah. Yes, so, yeah. so, uh, so deacons were revered in the early church and they were honored because they were the long arm of the bishop. OK, the, there, there might be there's a, in the city of Rome, a city as big as Rome or Alexandria. There are a lot of Christians, maybe, but only one bishop. Right. Mm -hmm. And he's got to serve all of these people in a time of great danger because it's a time of persecution. So he would send his deacons out if word had to get out about something. His deacons mm -hmm. would go from place to place, you know, delivering the message that had to be delivered. Mm -hmm. His deacons were also the uh, the delivery system for um, for food and mm -hmm. financial help and mm -hmm. charity and all of these things that the church dispensed. So the deacons were everybody was always happy to see the deacon coming because right? mm -hmm. <laughs> because uh, it was it was always because it was bearing something for them, something they needed. Um, mm -hmm. So the deacons were honored. They were revered. Most of the popes in the first 500 years of the pope of the papacy were chosen not from the ranks of the priests but from the ranks of the deacons mm, servant most of, of the servants popes, of god yeah they were deacons mm. immediately before they were popes most of mm, them that's the an interesting majority. insight wow so deacon uh deacon lawrence was one of these most beloved men and he was in the city of rome and among his duties were one caring for the liturgical vessels of the church. Mm. Okay. He was the one who took care of the chalices, the patens, the pyxes, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the dove where they, they kept the, uh, the, the blessed sacrament. All of these things were made of precious metals. Uh, they were, they were worth, worth a lot of money if you wanted to think about it in those terms, but they were sacred. So he mm -hmm. was, he was assigned to care for those. He was also assigned to care for the poor of the city of Rome. Right. So when he was captured during the um, the persecution of Valerian, uh, he was uh, he was rounded up and um, and uh, they knew that he was the guy who was in charge of all that gold and silver, mm -hmm. the chalices, the patents. Oh, that, I didn't know that. Wow, that's interesting. And so they said to him, "Take us to the treasure of the church." Mm -hmm. And he took them to the poorest section of town and he showed them the poorest people and he said, "These are the treasure." of the church praise the right? lord oh how these are the treasure yeah, of the church how beautiful yeah and uh they weren't amused <laughs> mm -hmm. so uh he was he was condemned to die and he was condemned to die on a gridiron they wanted to make sure that they made an example of him because he was so beloved uh he was you know and and of course the famous um the famous uh account of his death is that is that he was there on the gridiron he turned to the executioner and he said turn me over i'm done on this side 
you know, yeah, I mean, as if Clint he was a Eastwood. barbecue. Yeah. It's totally Clint Eastwood, you know, all the way. But he, you know, in times like that, uh, supernatural, super supernatural grace God gives to have said those words, here is the treasure of the church and it's the, the poorest of the poor. You know, it's, it's um, Holy Spirit, Holy oh. Spirit inspired. You know, we he was have a witty for... man. Yeah. Yeah. He was, yeah. but God sanctified Even... his wit. Yes. Yeah, we remember that to the to this day. We have one more uh, one more story. We got a, a, a few more minutes, and now all of a sudden, I'm forgetting the name of the the bishop well, who. Uh, the, go ahead, you tell us. Who well, you while tell while us. you're thinking about oh, that, go ahead. Man, I want to stay ahead. on Lawrence because what's yeah. very interesting about Lawrence is that he was martyred about the same time as the Pope Pope Sixtus, right? Sixtus II, mm-hmm. um, and almost nobody remembers Sixtus today. But everybody remembers Lawrence. So again, mm. it tells you something about about the the great affection that the church had for the deacon in that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that everybody remembered Lawrence, and within just a few years, there were churches dedicated to Lawrence's memory all over the city of Rome. Mm. And it's still the case today. So that if you get off a plane at Fiumicino Airport and you go up to a taxi driver and you say, "Take me to the Church of Saint Lawrence," he'll look at you like you're crazy and he'll say. Which one? <laughs> oh, really? There are so many oh, churches wow. of Saint, uh, dedicated to the memory of St. Lawrence because they're all over, all over the city of Rome, even to this day, after 1900, 1800 years, you know? Well, let's talk, let's talk about that. Um, you know, you, you, people that are listening, um, just, you know, we want you to be remembered too. Mm. We want you to be, uh, we want, God has... God has a desire for you to be remembered, not to have some great legacy or a statue of you necessarily someplace, um, but in the way you serve people, in the way you serve your family. And, uh, you know, you know who the, the greatest saints of the day are when I go into Mass early and there's so many women alone praying. So yeah. we're talking about manliness, but those women of virtue that I believe the church runs on their prayers <laughs> Their prayers, those they're sometimes are widows, and oftentimes they're just women that don't have a a man who's devoted to the church in their lives, but they're in they're in church early and they're praying the rosary. Um be you'll be remembered. You know, so many times when I interview people, tell me about your conversion. Well, my grandmother, I remember her praying the rosary, or my mother mm-hmm. would pray the rosary, you know. Um, and you men there too. We, you we want you to be remembered in the lives of your children and the lives of the people around you. Um, there's a there's a that they used to say about Christians and see how they love one another. Mm-hmm. Who was, who was the, the Bishop? Gosh, you know, I forget he was being taken to Rome. I'm just jelling today. And he was taken into the Colosseum and, and uh, he would tell people, don't tell, he would, you know who I'm talking about. Ignatius say, of Antioch. Yeah. Ignatius. Yeah. yeah you got yeah. two minutes to make that story happen. And we got to go. <laughs> well, that's one of the great from the very, very early days of the church. Ignatius in 107 AD is condemned in Syria, he's Bishop of Antioch in Syria. As an older man, right? As an older man, but yeah. they're going to execute him in Rome, which is very unusual. And is he actually, you know, some people say it was illegal according to the laws on the books, but they wanted to make a big example of him because he was a rock star. You know, he was mm-hmm. a superstar. He was a celebrity case that they had. They could make an example of Ignatius. So he's traveling to Rome under military escort to be to be, um, to be be killed you know, in mm. the, in the arena, in the Colosseum. And, and he writes letters to all of these places and he would, they would bring him out and show him, show him to the people uh, so that the people would be afraid knowing about what, where he was going and what was going to mm-hmm. happen there. But he wasn't afraid. He showed no fear. He showed joy. He mm-hmm. showed courage. And so he fortified the Christians in every town that they yes, stopped in along the way. Yes. But he wrote ahead to the Romans. He sent a letter ahead of him. To the Rome, to the church in the the city of Rome, and he told them, you know, do nothing to interfere with 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 my execution. Do nothing to save yes. me, you know, right. because he wanted to be so closely united to Christ that mm-hmm. he died the way Christ died, you know, and, mm-hmm. in an execution, spilling and, his blood in the arena in the, col- as a in, the in the Colosseum, right? A and public in that, witness, yes. In, the, in that moment, they said that he, um, there, there was this fragrance of baked bread. 
Oh, is that right? Now you're 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 talking about one of his close friends, Polycarp oh, of Smyrna. Well, we got okay. Polycarp. We got to go, but we got to go, man. We're running out of time. That's why we always have you back. You know, every at every feast, there's always leftovers, so we got to leave oh, a few of these. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Mike next Apple, time we'll get to Polycarp. Yeah. Oh yeah, you know, I, it's funny. I'm struggling with the, the with their with their names, but there's just so such a great cloud of witnesses. We're talking with Mike Aquilina, one of our favorite people in the world, and so glad to have you on our show. We'll have you back soon. I hope. Uh, Mike Aquilina, uh, where can they find you? Is there a website they can find you on? Yeah, fathersofthechurch.com, fathersofthechurch.com. Oh, yeah, that's right, fathersofthechurch.com. Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wildstick Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wildstick Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.